This is the Freeman FRA 2001 Computer Driven Code Machine. This video will lead you through the setup and use of your new code machine. To begin, select a suitable location for the machine. With the laptop connected, the unit weighs about 75 pounds. You should select a location with a good source of AC power. The warranty on the FRA 2001 is only valid when both the machine and laptop are connected to a quality surge protector. After you remove both the laptop, if supplied, and the key machine from the shipping containers, place the machine in its desired location. Before plugging it in, make sure both the main and spindle switches are turned to the off position. The spindle of the machine may move forward in shipping, which will allow the cutter to begin turning if the spindle switch is not turned off. Plug both the machine and laptop into the surge protector. Connect the 9-pin serial cable to the back of the laptop. Turn on the laptop and let the Windows operating system load. Once at the desktop, double-click the icon to launch the program. This may take a few moments. Before we look at the software program, let's familiarize ourselves with the key machine. The machine has two switches, main and spindle. The main power switch controls power to the entire machine. If it is turned off, no power will reach any part of the key machine. The spindle switch controls power to the motor and, in turn, the cutting wheel. This switch should be off when changing cutters or the first few times you cycle the machine to make sure everything is operating correctly. A built-in deburring brush is included in the case of the machine. The brush does not rotate. Deburring is done by moving the key back and forth through the slot. The key vise is reversible and is probably the most important part of cutting keys correctly on the machine. You will notice that one side of the vise has a dimple or dot drilled into the top. This is referred to in the program as the dot side of the vise. As a general rule for cutting keys on the machine, use the dot side of the vise for cutting single-sided keys and the opposite or non-dot side of the vise for all double-sided keys. If you need to turn the vise around, loosen the T-nut and lift up on the base of the vise. Turn it 180 degrees until it snaps into place. Another aspect of the vise that is important is gauging the keys properly. As a rule, if the key has a shoulder, use the flip-down shoulder stop to align the key. Single sided keys such as GM 6 cut or Chrysler 5 cut keys would be aligned in this manner. Double sided keys that have a shoulder on both sides can be aligned using this stop or by simply stopping the key when the bottom shoulder touches the vise. If a key does not have a shoulder it will be gauged using the built-in tip stops. In the case of a GM 10 cut key the tip will touch the tip stop before the shoulder touches the right side of the vise so align the key with the tip stop. A very important point of the vise on the machine is that all keys are to be inserted to the very back of the vise. Keys cannot be clamped by the millings as on some duplicating machines. If a key is cut too deep, it is normally because the milling was used and the key was too close to the vise. Always bottom out the blank in the back of the vise towards the user. When inserting a double-sided key in the vise, only about one-third of the key should stick out towards the cutting wheel. If you can see the middle of the key, the key is not inserted properly. When cutting some double-sided keys with deep cuts at the tip of the key, make sure you insert the key straight when cutting the second side. It is possible to insert the key at an angle and have a miscut if there are several deep cuts at the tip of the key. Look down the milling of the blank and be sure it is parallel with the face of the vise. This will assure a perfectly cut key every time. Keys are always inserted with the head to the right and the tip to the left. The vise moves laterally from its home position on the right side to the key cutting position at the left. After cutting is done, the key will return to its loading position at the right side of the machine. The cutting head of the machine moves longitudinally in and out. When cutting a key, the cutter will come forward, make the necessary cuts, and return to the rear position of the machine. A position switch turns the cutter on and off only when the spindle switch is in the on position. Remember, if the main power switch is off, the machine will not make any movements. A few important points about the laptop and software package that should be covered. The laptop supplied with your machine has either a stick-tight mouse or a touchpad. The left and right mouse buttons are normally below the first row of keys on the keyboard. The left mouse button is the only one used with the 2001 software. Do not position the mouse over a button and press the Enter key, as pressing the Enter key will perform different actions at different screens. If you prefer not to use the mouse, you can use the ALT key and the underlying letter on a button to perform the same action. Many users find the keyboard much quicker and easier than using the mouse. We can now examine the software package that controls the FRA 2001 key cutting machine. Once the Windows operating system is loaded, 
You should be at the desktop and see the generic code or auto code icon is shown. Double click the icon to start the program. If you purchase the machine with a laptop computer, our older version 2.6 software may also be installed. This version is being phased out in 2006. Only the newer software will be covered in this video. Once the software is loaded, we should check the machine settings before we proceed any further. Click on the Application Setup button from the main menu to access the machine settings and options pages. At the first screen, you will be able to set your preferred key blank type to display. You can also choose a second type if you use more than one numbering system in your business. If you purchase the machine with the full code database, you will also have the option to set your preferred type of code search. Under Machine Type, you should see Frame and Automatic. Next to the Frame and Automatic setting, you will see the Setup button. To check your machine settings, click the Setup button and you will be taken to the Settings page. You should see the currently installed cutter across the top of the screen. Just below the cutter line, you will see six boxes showing various machine settings. The Y and X home numbers are the most important settings, as they dictate at what position, in both space and depth, the machine will cut a key. Open your owner's manual to the settings page, and you will find two handwritten numbers for the Y and X home positions. These numbers are also handwritten on the back of most machines. They should match those on your screen. If they do not match, you can change the Y home number by clicking on Adjust Depth, and the X home number by clicking on Adjust First Cut. More on adjusting the machine can be found in your owner's manual. Please note that if you ever change to one of our coded or carbide cutters for the machine, you will need to adjust the first cut position on the key machine. With the numbers matching properly, the next thing we should do is check the communication and cycle the machine once. Leave the spindle switch off and turn on the main switch on the key machine. Click the mouse on the communication button at the bottom left corner of the screen. In the middle of the screen, you will be able to choose your COM port, which is normally COM1. If you feel this is incorrect, you can change it by clicking the arrows on the screen. To cycle the machine, click on the Test Communication button. A window will appear indicating that the motors are being homed. If the COM port is selected properly, you should hear the servo motors turning. If the machine is not in its home position, the test should place them in the correct position. When the window disappears, the machine is ready to cut keys. You can turn on the spindle switch. The motor will not turn at this point, but will turn on when the machine is actually cutting a key. If the window does not disappear and the machine is not making any sound, the communications is most likely set incorrectly. Press the escape key to close the window and click OK. Turn the main power switch off once for about 5 seconds, turn it back on and try the test again. If the machine still does not make any sound, press escape, click OK, and try another COM port. Most computers use either COM1 or COM2. Once the machine is communicating, we can begin cutting keys. You will also see at this screen a button which reads Reset Machine. If the machine ever goes beyond its home position, this button will put the machine back into the proper position. If you ever hear the machine making a thumping noise, it is most likely beyond its home position. Turn the main power switch off for 5 seconds, turn it on, and click Reset Machine. A warning will be shown regarding the cutting wheel. Click OK. The vise should make a lateral movement to the left, and the cutter head should move forward about 1 inch. The machine will then slowly cycle itself back to its own position. Once the machine is finished moving, you can turn on the spindle switch. The machine is now ready to cut keys. To cut our first key, determine a code number for a lock you have easy access to. In our example, we'll cut a new Toyota Pontiac 10 cut key with a code number of 63114. To start, we'll click on the code number button at the top of the screen. A search page will appear and the cursor will be in the enter code box. Using the keyboard, type in the code number and click search. A listing will appear showing all matches for this code number we typed in along with a key blank number. Keep in mind that a key cut for the 50,001 to 69,999 code series shown on this screen will be the same regardless of whether we pick the Pontiac or Toyota listings. If the code series match, the key will be cut exactly the same, though sometimes on a different blank. We'll pick the Pontiac Vibe series by clicking on the line, then clicking on View Key Data, which will take us to the key cutting screen. The key cutting screen shows all the cutting specifications for the key we chose. There are only a few buttons we need to be concerned with at this screen. Cut key, cut type, and add to history. You can double check the code entered at the top left of the screen. Cut type will either be plunge or laser cut. Automotive keys are cut using the laser cut settings. All others default to plunge. With that set properly, insert the key in the vise. As discussed earlier, make sure the key is bottomed out in the vise. 
We are cutting a double-sided key so the dot should be toward the user and the key has no shoulder so we will align it with the tip stop. Tighten the vise to secure the key. Now click the cut the key button and the machine will begin cutting the key. A window will appear indicating what the machine is doing. Once the first side has been cut, flip the key over and cut the second side as directed by the program. If you are interested, you can add this key to the history database by clicking on the Add to History button. This will allow you to enter information to identify this key for future use. After the data is saved, it will be stored for future retrieval under the History button at the main menu. To recall a previously saved key, click on the History button and select the record. You will be returned to the key cutting screen where you can make another key for the customer. If you know the cuts for the key instead of the code, you can use the Manufacturers section to generate a key. To cut a GM single-sided six-cut key, click on Manufacturers and then type CHEV in the search box. This will page down to the Chevrolet section where you can select the proper series to cut the key for. In our case, the six-cut is shown in the table. Click on the proper listing and then click on View. We will be taken to the key cutting screen as before, only this time we need to type the cuts into the box. After the cuts have been entered, click on Cut Key. Remember, single-sided keys use the dot side of the vise and are aligned using the flip-down shoulder stop. This covers the basics of using the FRA 2001 machine to code cut keys. Next, we'll cover some of the advanced features of using the machine. If you are a locksmith doing automotive work, the generic code program and the FRA 2001 key machine are an excellent combination to make your work easier. At the key cutting screen, after looking up a key code, you can use the Convert Cuts to Code function to search for known cuts and develop a progression chart. Our version 5 software allows you to cut keys directly from the progressions page. If you use the Determinator tool to originate keys, Genericode now has a full listing of determinators with the half cuts already programmed in. Next, we'll look at some common errors and troubleshooting of the machine. First, try and shut the computer down at least once each week. Many customers never turn off the computer or the machine. The Windows operating system on your computer will be much easier to work with if you allow it to clear its memory once every five to seven days. Even shutting down and restarting the laptop weekly will help keep your program running smoothly. If you ever experience a problem where the machine is not responding to the software, this indicates that communication between the machine and laptop has been interrupted or cut off. The first attempt to correct the problem should be to turn off the main power switch for 5 seconds and turn it back on. Try cutting the key again. If the problem is not corrected, check the connection between the laptop and machine. If this still does not rectify the problem, turn off the main power switch on the machine and restart the computer. Once the software is running again, turn the main power switch back on and try cutting the key again. If you still have a problem, contact Freeman for additional help. If you have reason to believe that the machine is not in its correct home position, use the Reset Machine procedure described above to reset the machine. Be sure to have the spindle switch off for the operation. The machine is fuse protected. If you ever have a problem with communications, you may want to check the fuse in the back of the machine and make sure it is in good shape. If you are having problems cutting a key and need to contact us, we cannot offer any help without the following. Make, model, and year of the car you are cutting the key for, code number you are cutting, and key blank number you are using. If there is an original key available for the car you are having a problem with, it would be helpful to have it and compare it to the key the machine is generating. Also, if you have access to dial calipers or a micrometer, depth settings on the key can be checked. In normal use, the machine will rarely, if ever, need adjustment. Your FRA 2001 machine should give you years of trouble-free use. Code updates are available yearly for the machine through your distributor.